we've got a little problem here. This is the display on one of our two large kilns in the studio, and um, yeah, it's not looking good. I do believe that this Tiki Technical Tuesday is going to be all about kiln maintenance. So what the Fancy Pants display here is telling me is that uh, the kiln is currently idling, not doing anything. The program that's loaded is a cone six ceramic glaze program. And then this is showing me what is happening inside of the kiln that's a, at this exact moment. There are three thermocouples in this kiln. Fancy word, we're gonna get to that later. And two of them are no longer working. Let's take a look under the hood. Alrighty, so a kiln is basically a giant oven, just like your oven at home, but it gets way hotter. Like I guess a home oven goes about 500 degrees maybe? This kiln we usually take over 2000 degrees. It's heated by these coils of wire running around all around the kiln. Those are called the elements. And then these three little nubbins are the thermocouples and they are the thermometers that the kiln uses to see, you know, how hot it is inside and to control the firing. Both the thermocouples and the elements are consumables, meaning that as you run your kiln, they will eventually wear out and you've got to replace them. And that is unfortunately what I've got to do today. So here we have the stuff that we're gonna be putting into the kiln, the brand new replacement parts. I have got three elements. These are the heating coils that go around the kiln, and you can see they are like super shiny and nice. Not all dull and melted and warped like the ones that are in the kiln. And I also have these three little gems, the new thermocouples. Now take a look at how shiny these things are. Uh, they look super nice. Uh, and keep this in mind because we're going to crack open the ones that are in there, and you'll see that I bet you that they're just vaporized away until nothing. So. The kiln is an electric kiln, not a gas kiln, and uh, everything runs on electricity in the kiln, as you may have guessed. Um, it is heated through electrical resistance, meaning that as electricity runs through these coils of wire, uh, the wire causes resistance, which makes them heat up, and that's how that works. Now, the reason that they eventually have to get replaced is uh, they begin to corrode, which means it takes more and more energy to create the heat, um, and then they just eventually wear out. Um, the thermocouples, I think, are even cooler. Uh, these things are made of two different metals that are welded together, and at the weld point, uh, it actually creates a very, very, very tiny amount of, they call it millivoltage, like a really low electrical charge, and that electrical charge changes depending on the temperature of the, these two wires. So attaching these things to a little voltmeter, which is what the pyrometer is, and then having this stick inside the kiln where the weld is, uh, they can see what the temperature of the kiln is based on the fluctuations of the voltage generated by this weld. It's crazy, it's science, and like I said, I am no scientist, uh, but that's how they work. Of course, since the thing is sticking inside the kiln, eventually it will burn out. That weld will start to corrode and fail, um, and uh, as you'll see when we pull these out, uh, they can be pretty nasty when they come out of the kiln after a lot of use. So uh, I am currently reading up on how to take this thing apart and uh, we're gonna go tackle it. <laughs> All righty, here we have a beautiful brand new kiln, fresh from the factory, shiny tip. It's beautiful. And here is the one that just came out of the kiln. Da -da. Look at that thing. Look at that. Oh, look at the, the dirt coming off of it. Oh, the horror, the horror. Although it is kind of cool, the sparkles on the top. Yeah. Definitely glad that we're doing this now and I probably shouldn't have waited this long. a very awkward position to be working in. Okay, so that's one. I'm gonna button it up, see if this one is reading. And if it is, then I will swap out the other two and we will move on to the elements. Okay, I just powered back up. Let's see, 
Oh my goodness. Yes. That's the one that we just replaced. It's reading correctly. That's the one that was never gave us a problem, but we're gonna replace it anyway because we know it's old. And then that's the third one that's failed. So it's working. The one we put in works, everybody. Look at that, 87, 88 degrees. Woo! Yeah! So we're just gonna replace the other two and then we will jump on to the part that I am dreading the most. That's the elements. Okay, so I've gone through and I have labeled wires with tape. I have taken a million photographs um, and I think I'm ready to start yanking out the old cables, uh, the element wires. Oh man. All right, we're gonna be committed now. Ooh. Oh my God, not my favorite job in the ceramic studio. <laughs> stay, stay. Now, once I fire this once, the, the springs will kind of relax and they'll settle in. But until then, it's like a, it is like a ticking time bomb. They just want to pop out of these things. Um, All right, well, that's uh, one of the one, two, three, four, five, Six. Huh. <sighs> Trying to stay positive, but uh, oh my God, when it rains, it pours. So this is the uh, like the little ceramic block that all of the elements come out through and then the, the kilns, electricity gets connected to them. Uh, the elements get bolted into these little uh, rings here. Unfortunately, on this one right here, this nut is like cross-grained on this threaded rod and I just can't get it to budge. I don't know if that happened when the kiln was built that they just <laughs> zimped it on there and, and cinched it up and didn't realize it was cross-grained or if somehow the kiln got hot and it shifted, I don't know. But I can't get it off of there. I'm gonna have to take this whole piece off and um, see if I can just replace this with a standard, looks like a stainless steel bolt. If not, I'm gonna have to call up the kill manufacturer and get some replacement parts. <sighs> we're gonna get through this. We are gonna get through this. You and me, we're gonna do this. Um, I'm gonna take this off, give the company a, <clears throat> the company a call, and then um, if they have to, if I have to mail order the part, I'll just swap out the rest of the elements and wait until it arrives. Or if I can go to the hardware store, maybe we'll take a trip to the hardware store. Uh, yeah, let's just take this out and see what we can get. So it is just like a, a stainless steel bolt, but I'm gonna have to cut this off with an angle grinder or something like that because of this. It's just frozen on there and I don't want to force it and, sm and, and crack this, this high temperature porcelain fitting. Um, oh, dilemmas. We got it. But can we replace this? I don't know. It's time to make a phone call.
Thank God for good manuals, uh, L&L kilns. You put together a great manual. Um, I couldn't get a hold of my kiln guy, but looking through the manual, I am seeing that this is a 1024 stainless steel bolt, one and a quarter inches long, which I think I can find locally. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna see if I can get it at the hardware shop down the street. Um, that's probably gonna be it for today though. It is Friday and it is getting late in the afternoon. So that's gonna be the last effort today. And uh, we'll pick this up um, on another day. I hope you enjoyed this more than I did. Good morning. It's day two of the Fix the Kiln adventure. So I spent most of this morning before breakfast driving around trying to find one of these. It is a 1024 stainless steel bolt and critically it has this hex head that is the hexagonal top. And the reason we need that hex head is it's got to fit inside of this porcelain piece like so. So it like locks in like that. And that's the critical part. And that's what's made it so hard to find. Anyway, nobody in Eugene had it. So I'm ordering some right now off of McMaster Car. They should arrive tomorrow. Uh, in the meantime, we are going to pop into the studio and replace all the other elements. And hopefully we won't break any more bolts. Um, Okay, that is number two of six. Uh, just four more to go. Okay, well, the old elements are all out and we've got all the new elements in. Now I just gotta wire them up and I am so glad that this part of the process is over with. So I just broke another bolt. Um, I don't know what the deal is, but I'm glad I ordered a whole box of replacements. I think we're going to stop here and I'm not going to do any more work until I can get the rest of the materials I need. So this is going to be a two-parter cliffhanger, Tiki Technical Tuesday. Um, you will get the second half next week where I will hopefully get this all connected and you will find out just what a cone is. See you next week.